The Web 3.0 space is absolutely exploding. There's unprecedented demand for blockchain developers to build the next generation of Web 3.0 based applications. But there's a major problem when people enter into this space. There are so many different ways to build blockchain based applications. There's so many different libraries and frameworks that sometimes it can be completely overwhelming trying to choose, you know, which one to pick. And you just don't even know where to start. Well, today I'm going to help you get over that problem, and I'm going to talk about two of the most popular smart contract development frameworks out there, Hardhat and Truffle, and compare them and talk about, you know, which one's best, which one should you use. So I'm going to talk about this as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis, who has used both of these frameworks. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. I've helped thousands of people become real-world blockchain developers. And so if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step-by-step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So let's talk about hard hat versus truffle. How are they similar? How are they different? Which one should you use? So let's talk about you know similarities first and foremost. So Hard Hat and Truffle are both smart contract development frameworks uh, for Ethereum and other EVM compatible blockchains. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, let's talk about what a framework is in the first place. So a framework is just a set of tools that you install on your computer that help you create something, any software. In this case, it's going to be smart contracts. So a framework is something that gives you a bunch of out of the box so that you'd have to bunch of, you know, build a bunch of stuff from scratch. For example, if you want to write a test for a smart contract, there's a way for you to do it out of the box inside of a framework like Hard Hat or Truffle. Or if you want to deploy a smart contract, you know, to a blockchain from your computer, you can just do it with one line from your terminal after you've installed a framework on your computer that helps you do that. And it lets, gives you a place to save all your files, all that type of stuff. So Hard Hat and Truffle both do the same thing in that regard. They're both just there to speed up the development process for blockchain applications and smart contracts in particular, but they implement each of these differently. So for example, you can you know write smart contracts Solidity, you can write tests, scripts, connect the nodes. They're both, they're both JavaScript based. So let's talk about the differences and which one do I use? Like which one should you use? Well, first of all, let's talk about how my background, I've used both. So when I first got in the space, you know, Truffle was basically the only option. But since then, you know, Hard Hat's come onto the scene and has been getting a lot of popularity. And so when I saw Hard Hat rise into popularity, it's definitely something I wanted to check out. At the end of the day, I'm here to educate you all and support what's in demand and what people want to learn. So you can see the trend change over time. Like you can actually look at the NPM downloads here. You can see, uh, you know, the weekly downloads for Truffle, the current trend, and the current trend for Hard Hat, you know, which has been growing... Uh, significantly. Okay. And so you can see that the total weekly downloads from Hard Hat has actually surpassed Truffle, you know, since it's been released. And so now we have real competition in the space, which we didn't have before. So now let's talk about each of these two and, you know, how they're different and then move on to my thoughts about which one you should choose and how to pick the best one for your project. Okay. So let's talk about some concrete differences between Hard Hat and Truffle. And for this section, I'm actually going to use code examples. Okay, so I'm actually going to pull up two different public repositories and uh, the DAP University uh, GitHub repository that corresponds to tutorials we've done. One project is created in uh, Truffle and another project is created in Hard Hat. So you'll see some of the differences outlined there. Okay, so uh, you can check this out. It's the ETH swap tutorial and the Decentra Twitter tutorial. So you can just go to the repository, you go to the organization and find those. So the first thing I want to talk about is debugging capabilities because this is one of the things that made Hard Hat famous. Uh, was essentially the ability to see what's going on inside your smart contracts a lot more easily, okay, or in a way that developers are familiar with. So uh, it, Solidity has been notorious uh, for being hard to debug, okay? Sometimes it doesn't, you don't know what's happening inside of a transaction whenever it fails. Like, you just get an error message, it's really hard to know what's going on. So Hard Hat got really famous with their console.log uh, feature for Solidity, which this programming language does not support out of the box, Okay. So basically what it does is it lets you import uh, a, a library from hardhat called console.log, and then you can actually put a console.log statement inside of your Solidity functions, kind of like you could in JavaScript, right? So people have a JavaScript background, very, very familiar with this, and a lot of people with JavaScript background are baffled that Solidity did not have something like this out of the box. Okay, so uh, you can see how that works in the hardhat tests, and you can see that uh, inside of your... Uh, inside this Decentra Twitter, if you go to the contracts page, you can see the console.log, uh, you know, here. Okay. So now, uh, Truffle definitely has debugging capabilities. Um, they have gotten better over time. Uh, but uh, I'm going to give a point to Hardhat in this regard for that capability. 
out of the box. That was one of the things they got famous for in the first place. I think they do a good job of that. However, Shuffle does have, uh, you know, some good debugging tools as well. It just works a little bit differently. All right, so let's talk about one big way that I think these frameworks are different. And that's the idea of like an opinionated framework or not. So what does that mean? Well, basically an opinionated framework says we have an opinion about how you're supposed to do something. And we, you know, like just if you just do it that way, it makes everything easier. For some that works differently, where it's sort of like, well, we want you to configure it how you want to use it. Okay. Now, in very broad brush strokes, okay, uh, very broad brush strokes here, I would say that Truffle is a little more opinionated than Hard Hat is. Now, Hard Hat has some default settings out of the box. If you want to just set it up and use it, you can use it that way. Um, but I would say Hard Hat's definitely more on the configurable side if you really like to tweak things in your framework. Okay. So, for me personally, I don't love to just tweak things. I kind of like, just get something that works. And it, it, as long as it works well enough, just like keep doing it that way. All right. But if you like, if you have strong preferences or you like to experiment with things, then hard hat, um, you know, I would say is more configurable than Truffle is. Truffle is still configurable. You can still do things like use plugins, but there's some things a little bit harder to change. So you can see that here inside of hard hat. Um, you know, if you like, if you just love using ethers.js, you know, just use the ethers.js plugin. If you really love Web3, just use the Web3 plugin. It's, it's, it, hard hat makes it pretty easy to configure in that regard. You just say, use this first, use that. And then boom, your entire framework switches gears. Or something like uh, Truffle, it's, it's got plugins, okay? Um, you can see how to do certain things like that. But it's a little bit harder if you just like say, hey, I don't want to use Web3.js, which is the default for Truffle. I just want to switch over to Ethers.js. That's a little more tricky to do, okay? So you can see the list of uh, hard hat plugins that are you know, uh, supported here. You can also took out Truffles plugins. But in the terms of like sort of the opinionated sort of side of things versus not opinionated, another way in which that uh, kind of expresses itself is in how, you know, hard hat versus Truffle handle smart contract deployments, okay? Um, so basically, like if you want to put your smart contract on the blockchain for Truffle, uh, you need to create something called a migration. And so there's this migration folder and Truffle has a really particular way that it uses its migrations with actual migration smart contracts. You always have to have this migration contract that's like managing, you know, where the addresses are for the uh, contract you just created. Okay, you have to kind of use this really specific uh, syntax for, you know, migrating your smart contracts, and they go in this special folder that have to be numbered, all that type of stuff. So Hard Hat's a little bit different. Okay, so Hard Hat really just uses this catch-all scripts folder. To, to do any blockchain scripting, okay, within the deployment, I'm sorry, within the framework itself. And that's where you'll see uh, basically uh, your migrations in many cases or your deployment scripts where you put your smart contracts to the network. So if, if you do a deployment, then it's going to go in the same directory as a script that you would use to, I don't know, let's just say like, you know, move some tokens around. Let's say you had a script where you want to interact with the blockchain from your project. It's going to go in the same folder as your deployment script. Okay, so Truffle's going to work a little bit differently. You're going to have migrations in one place that have real specific behavior. And if you want to run a script another way, it's going to go in the scripts folder and you're going to execute those with the Truffle script runner rather than the migration. Now, one thing I'll say when I first got into Hard Hat was the way the way Truffle basically saves smart contract addresses um, to his project, I like better so that you can always find out where your smart contract is. And whenever you're loading it up with the Truffle contract, um, you know, in the console or in your project, it automatically knows where the smart contract is, where that's a little bit harder to do with hard hat. Okay. Now, that being said, if you're using the hard hat node, uh, it will save the same smart contract address every time. So that is a little bit of a, a saving grace in that regard. All right. So another difference I want to talk about between these two projects is their support for development blockchains. Okay. So, um, out of the box, you know, tr you know, the default way to use Truffle essentially is to use their external blockchain called Ganache. Um, and the default mode for using Ganache is through the command, sorry, the graphical user interface or the GUI. And basically what that means is you get this app on your computer that's like a point and click blockchain where you can see, uh, you know, all the accounts inside of it, how much ether they have, uh, what their private keys are. So you can, you know, do stuff like test your applications out without spending your own money. You can restart, restop this thing. Okay. It also has the option to do Ganache CLI, which is like this. I think they actually just call it Ganache now. So you might just, you, I'm going to show you a command here. This is Ganache CLI, but you can do it with Ganache. Uh, Ganache CLI. And, and newer versions, you just run the command Ganache because it's been updated. But 
basically that's a uh, command line interface version of Ganache on your computer. We can see the same type of thing. You get, you know, 10 accounts with 100 Ether inside of them. Here's their private keys. So Hard Hat also has one of these called Hard Hat Node. I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, well, let's actually just go ahead and do it now. So I can do MPX in a different project, Hard Hat Node. Okay, and actually I need to stop the Ganache instance before I do that. Let's just try it again here. So MPX Hard Hat Node. And you can see that I've got, you know, the same type of thing. You know, basically, you know, I've got 20 accounts, so you get more accounts, and they have, you know, 10,000 Ether, so you get more test Ether, which some people like that because so you can move large amounts of money around. Uh, the nice thing about the hard hat nodes, if you start it and restop it, I think you get the same accounts every time, worth with Truffle out of the box. Um, you have to specify the mnemonic seed phrase if you want that to happen. Um, hard hat also has some things when you're deploying the contracts to the blockchain that you get the same smart contract address every time, which is pretty nice. Truffle's address might change when you're doing development. Okay. So uh, those are some key differences there. Um, so, you know, from a command line interface perspective versus a graphical user interface perspective, uh, I know a lot of developers like to do stuff from the command line. Uh, this, I will say that this right here is really nice for beginners to just point and click something out of the box who are, uh, you know, not necessarily familiar with the command line or getting just getting used to it. Sometimes this is a stepping stone that helps sort of bridge that gap and make things easier. And honestly, sometimes just glancing at the app there are some things that I like about using the app better than the command line interface. Like I can always see how much balance is in each account all the time without having to write a script to check it or like go into the console and see like what the current balance is. Because if you just do it in the, you know, uh, if you just do it in the terminal here, then you know, you don't see that information updated all the time. Now, another thing I'll mention about their blockchains, their development blockchains or their nodes, just depending on how you want to think about it, is they both support uh, forking features. And actually, the Ganache forking feature has gotten better over time as well. Um, so basically, the whole idea is that, you know, you can take your project and you can just like point it to a real live like Ethereum node or you know Polygon node or whatever EVM compatible chain you want to and get the state of the blockchain at that point in time, okay, or a specific block number, and so that you can get access to the applications on top of it. Let's say that you want to build a bot that interacts with Uniswap or any DeFi app that requires real smart contracts on the network. You can fork the blockchain and get access to all the accounts and apps at that particular time and write scripts, smart contracts that interact with that. And so both of these uh, support that connectivity uh, if you use the command line interface for their nodes. And both of these functionalities have gotten a lot better over time. Whenever I saw this feature first uh, with Ganache, it was a little bit buggy, but both both frameworks have gotten better with this. All right, so let's talk about which one is best and which one should you use. So I'll try to give a pretty nuanced answer on this, okay? So first and foremost, it's really hard to say which one is definitively, you know, best, you know, air quotes. That's a pretty hard thing to really nail down. A lot of it's got to do with your personal preference and how you like to do things. Now, what is the market telling you from a demand perspective, which one's best? Well, the market, if you're looking from NPM downloads as a metric, then there's more NPM downloads for hard hat than there are truffle and the trend is growing for hard hat versus truffle so that's what the market looks like now the real question is do you fall in the category of what the majority wants now i will say this um if you're trying to build a project for the first time and you're starting from scratch and it's going to be a big project then choosing the right framework is important okay because the cost of switching later can be pretty high okay but if you're not there and you're just a beginner and you're just trying to figure out what should you build, okay, and, and what should you use. So you're not sitting here like all day, like hard hat or truffle, hard hat or truffle. Then just pick one. It ultimately really doesn't matter that much. They both basically do the same thing. Some things are going to be easier with one over the other. Some things you're going to, you know, be like, ah, oh, yes, I love doing it with this framework. And then the exact same framework, you're going to say, Oh, I can't believe why they didn't they just do it this way. Some of that's going to have to do with your own personal preferences, your background, and the opposite is going to be true for the other framework. Now, that being said, if you work for somebody and you have a very specific set of requirements or you're like uh, a freelancer or something and you, somebody says, okay, I want it to be built this way, then just go learn that thing. And that's the other thing I would say as a beginner is like if you're stuck trying to decide, just, just start because in those situations like, you know, it's going to be a lot easier for you to learn the other framework once you've learned one to begin with. But what you don't want to do, especially if you're brand new, is try to learn both at the same time. Because that's really just counterproductive and it's going to slow you down. But finally, I can tell you what I spend more time doing these days, okay? 
So like I said earlier in this video, you know, when I started, uh, Truffle is pretty much the only option. And so that's what I learned and really what I stuck with for a long time. Now, I also said that I, you know, kind of a creature of habit once something works pretty well. And I don't see a compelling reason for me to switch. I usually don't like to switch. That's one of the reasons I haven't used the same text editor for, you know, however many years, despite everybody, you know, going crazy over the next hot development tools. So my text editor works just fine. Uh, now, that being said, uh, I do like to make tutorials for people who want certain technology. And because hard hat's gotten so popular, I spent more time doing things in hard hat because, you know, that's what the market um, has started to demand quite a bit. And I want to stay relevant with that market to help you all learn, you know, what's in demand. So if you want to continue to follow that where there's more support and more demand, then you can definitely start building your projects that way. But at the end of the day, you just want to learn something and you want to get really good at it. And it's just got to work well enough. So hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people learn about blockchain. And if you want to find more, you know, uh, projects like this that are built with both Hard Hat and Truffle so that you can see, you know, how each of them works, you can definitely go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or, hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.